move back to the next session uh, of the embedded uh, system testing. This is session four. Uh, this is a continuation of uh, test case design and procedures. Uh, uh, so what we have was started in the previous session. A quick uh, recap of uh, what we have done in the previous session. Uh, we did uh, general testing uh, philosophy, analyzing the requirements, uh, uh, what are the steps uh, involved in that, and uh, what are the steps that are required for uh, general testing philosophy, and uh, uh, what is um, meant by verification, validation, and how it differs than testing. Is it uh, the only definition that is used, or VNB is used? And uh, what is the difference between testing and debugging for purpose? And test planning, that is the first thing we are going to start in any of the email testing life cycle. So we will start with the specification plan, we will uh, write the approaches, multiple approaches, then we will apply the testing process uh, covering all these aspects. Then, specific to the test plan, there is an applied test process resulting in a test plan. If there are any deviations, that needs to be highlighted. That is called deviations to the test strategy. Finally, we will come up with a test plan. Test plan is a goal to be had. It should be as per the plan and the project plan. Then the purpose of then test plan contains the typical test plan contains as per the IEEE 8298. So, this has uh, all these uh, elements, so about 16 elements there. So also, we had a definition of a test strategy, what it means. Then, uh, what are the strategies, uh, how it is be, how it will be addressed in the test plan, the system test, uh, user test, integration test, and component level test. And also, we had a walkthrough of a Sample uh, test plan. So I'll just uh, open it again so that uh, you have a fair uh, idea and uh, for the registration. Uh, we'll introduce about uh, the complete test uh, lifecycle uh, plan, what is being done. Then uh, the references like external document, internal document, all the effort. Then uh, verification response. Uh, that test plan. I will just again open the test plan example. Uh, basically, it has uh, about a uh, eight nine six six. These are all line levels. What we have to find the using I T P format. Uh, it has an introduction about the test plan, applicable external and internal references for document. Also, it has an applicable uh, customer requirements, etc., and any processes that is uh, followed in the test life cycle. And uh, verification step responsibility, verification method, activities, what is the environment, and uh, tracing it to compliance mapping uh, in terms of the process uh, we had gone through. Additional considerations, anything uh, specific we need to have that also we have, uh, we have to consider. The end the standard is and any guidance that's part of the testing is concerned should be used. So, introduction uh, will have uh, purpose, responsibilities, chain control, compliance, abbreviation, and uh, referred external internal applicable documents will have to be highlighted. The next section uh, very valuable. Uh, Verification responsibility, uh, what is the organization structure, uh, who is going to control uh, what aspects of the test, all this will be highlighted. And of course, uh, uh, any industrial uh, embedded testing has to be uh, following some uh, sort of a uh, standard, like uh, in aerospace, they follow a uh, DO and NFP, which calls for uh, independence. That means here, independence means uh, the testing team has to be. Different than uh, the developer team or the development team. So, in that way, independence has to be 
Uh, why this is uh, to make sure that the test team is uh, uh, not aware of the some of the implementation details or uh, some of the uh, philosophical uh, uh, layout of uh, how it is being done or uh, they should not be biased. So make it uh, that independent uh, it is always suggested. Uh, uh, or it is the mandated to use an independent team for verification. Verification methods, so testing method, review method, analysis method. Verification activities. What are the verification activities? Planning, local verification. Verification of system requirement. Verification of high level requirement. Verification of outputs of the integration. The verification of the Overall uh, testing output dot com that is and uh, verification environment test environment test code qualification and uh, test harness. Of course, we are going to detail out uh, each aspect of this uh, in the uh, next uh, session or the next uh, slide. And we need to maintain a traceability of what is being covered in test code. Additional considerations uh, with uh, any partition used, compiler, any commercial or official tools are used, and that, that needs to be highlighted. And uh, from the process perspective and the guidelines perspective, we need to mention uh, the standard request and the guidelines, uh, something like a testing guidelines, a testing standard, how it should be, uh, those are all will be used. Of course, uh, during the review, the same thing needs to be uh, go through in order to maintain the review. So, after we go through the test plan, we know that uh, there are a lot of elements uh, that are part of the test plan. So, as part of the uh, first step, uh, what we are going to do of the test plan is approved and uh, uh, in place. We are going to start with the test cases, test case design, test case procedure. So, this outcome of this uh, test case design procedure is nothing but development of test cases for uh, each of the uh, requirements or the group of the requirements or the specification that is provided to the uh, testing team. And to map with that test cases, we are going to come up with a test procedure. Uh, as I said in the earlier session, test cases are theoretical steps of the groups or the logical groups of the requirements of the specification. Test procedures are the practical steps, how it should be done. Test cases will tell what to do, test procedures will tell how to do it. Test cases are theoretical steps, test procedures are practical steps in terms of covering all the test cases. Okay, so what is test specification? So test specification defines what to test. Test specification is part of the test way that is nothing but some of the testing elements or requirements. Basic building blocks of test specification are test cases. Test specification will have an instruction how to use the state and all that. Test specification will have requirements highlighted. Test specification will result in a reporting how much is covered, how much is placed, etc. So today we'll go through an example of test specification. Uh, before that, uh, I will reiterate uh, the test case design uh, step. We need to analyze the requirement. Here, the requirements could be any of the embedded uh, system product uh, specification or software requirement uh, that needs to be analyzed, that needs to be understood from the system perspective. Then, uh, we have requirements uh, categorization. 
your requirements categorization in this sense. We need to categorize uh, the different uh, sort of requirements like uh, it could be timing requirement or it could be uh, performance requirement or it could be uh, uh, any of the functional uh, requirements etc. So these are all uh, will be categorized uh, from the requirements perspective. Why we need to categorize is that uh, uh, this will ease out uh, the tester's job in terms of his understanding. Uh, suppose because uh, why I am telling this, suppose we have a team of uh, uh, four suppose, uh, we can divide the team structure in such a way that uh, one person can concentrate on the timing aspect. One person can look into some of the functional requirements. One person can look into performance requirements. One person can look into timing, uh, any other uh, memory related or anything, uh, etc. So again, we can divide that. So in terms of categorization and uh, aggregation, it is uh, a good practice that uh, we have a requirements categorization. Okay, so once we have the requirements to categorize after understanding the or analyzing the requirement, we are going to identify test cases. So, as I said earlier, test cases will have a test identifier and test conditions that is for the identifiers. So we have the different conditions how that the test cases will be used. Then we have test inputs. Then uh, test inputs are nothing but uh, the different uh, test uh, values that will be fed to the system for that particular requirement. Then uh, we will write the test output. So, what is the output expected of the particular test? Field. For doing that, there are the test conditions uh, which will be applied for the input in that is the next step. Uh, next one is the uh, test case uh, equivalence criteria. So once we have uh, this set of activity done for a group of requirement or uh, a specification document, we are good for uh, writing the test case. That means we have an understanding of how the test case should be. That is how we have started with the Test case uh, design. Once we have that, then we are going to apply the criteria. Here, uh, criteria means uh, I will explain that in uh, particular how it is getting done. Suppose uh, one uh, test requirement, sorry, one uh, requirement is supposed to take a uh, few values, or the requirement says that it can take 1 to 10. Let us say example 1 to 10 uh, uh, inputs. Uh, how I will test it? So, definitely the system is supposed to work taking the value 1, taking the value 10, taking the value anything between 1 to 10. So, we have, have to design in such a way that all these values have to be excited. Uh, does not mean that uh, all the values in incremental manner should be excited, but the test case design should choose a criteria such a way that it will exercise enough for the system to pass through all this. That means, if I have suppose 1 to 10, then I will do a equivalence class in terms of boundary. Here, boundary is we know that requirement can take 1, the requirement can take 10. So, the lower side is 1, the higher side is 10, and a moderate value also will consider that is an intermediate value uh, that is called equivalence. Uh, we want to do so. Then uh, we can do a equivalence of uh, two. Ten by two is five. So we will select the uh, values as one, five, ten. This will be my equivalence criteria for a normal range of test data. Then coming to the there is one category. The next category of uh,
test case was uh, designed uh, in terms of uh, test case inputs is that robust that means it could be an uh, out of uh, outside the uh, normal or uh, abnormal uh, inputs etc for example the requirement says that a system can take a value of 1 to 10 so we know that systems should work for 1 to 10 also we should make sure that the system will not work or the system is not going to take the values anything outside 1 to 10 so what will be the our inputs for this condition it will be outside this that is nothing but the robust range or the abnormal range the input value could be a 0 input value could be a minus 1 input value could be 11 etc so these are something like outside the normal thing or the abnormal input or the robust input uh, there are uh, chances that uh, the system may not accept uh, you need to understand this why because uh, as suppose uh, a knob uh, electric knob for a fan will have 0 to 10 as a preset value so how do I feed 0, how do I feed minus 1, how do I feed 11 is the question. So again I am reiterating that this again depends on the test harness, how we are going to develop it. Uh, I need to figure out a way of doing that or providing the input. If that is not possible then you need to justify using uh, different means. Here uh, there could be a manual uh, uh, go through of that or I am doing a uh, simulated input the particular uh, piece of software which is responsible for uh, taking the values from 0 to 10 etc. So in that way I am going to design it. So all this will be part of the test case design. So what are the test cases, what are the inputs, what is the condition and uh, what is the expected value for each of these categories, categorized test. Okay. So now we know that we have done the requirements analysis, test cases identified, test conditions so we know, uh, the test inputs we have defined. So all this will be the next set of exercise we have done. Next once we have done various test cases uh, for example, uh, for the example which I told 1 to 10, I could end up with uh, writing some maybe 15 test cases. Similarly, requirement 2 will have a different sort of a functionality uh, that may be having test cases of maybe 20, 50, 100, it depends on the particular requirement. What I am going to do now, I am going to group it. So, grouping is again based on the functionality or the timing and uh, performance, etc. It need not be purely based on the requirement, it is also based on the, the execution criteria. Suppose I am going to execute one set of requirement and the next set of requirements also could go through the same execution path, I can group it. So there is a chance that I can group multiple set of test cases for multiple requirements in this grouping activity. So grouping is only a very important activity where we are going to group the test cases such a way that it is meaningful and it is practically executable and uh, this aggregation and the report generation will be easier. So that is the intention of grouping the test cases. Of course, uh, sometimes what will happen is uh, grouping uh, grouping the test cases may not be enough. So what we have to do is uh, we have to consider some of these cases as a special categorization. We may have to ungroup it or we may have to categorize as a uh, independent test case or a lone test case. It does not uh, need to be for as an independent, uh, uh, it does not need to be followed as a group the test case, it can be a special category test case. Once you have all this, then uh, we are going to have a, a basic demarcation of the entire test in terms of functional and unfunctional sensor. We know what is functional, all the uh, user driven or market driven or the product driven requirements or requirements are all called as. Functional and 
the non functional requirement for something like uh, performance related or timing related or what is the throughput and uh, how much uh, it can tolerate uh, uh, in terms of uh, the current over voltage or it could be uh, size of the memory etc. So, these are some of the non functional requirements all this will be part of the complete test case design. So, this needs to be thoroughly done as well. Uh, this is the teamwork, so this has to be done with the help of the team. As I said, there is a, going to be a structure, just the organization uh, who will, uh, I think I have explained in now, uh, the test plan, I think, uh, about that. Which will have the structure defined for test case development. So, as per that, we are going to develop the test case design. Uh, we will consider an example of test case design. I think I will uh, visit this page uh, probably uh, after going through a uh, test spec. Test spec is nothing but test specification, which will have a test case identifier. Okay, in that example, uh, we are going to see uh, unique name or a title of the test case will be there. There is a unique identifier uh, for each of the test case, a description of the test case, the preconditions are the prerequisites that is required for the test case. Uh, the conditions are something like uh, which has to be mandatorily followed for uh, uh, doing the test, that particular test. That means it is a Predefined the condition for that test. Then we will have a steps which are all test case steps. Then we will have the expected result for this particular test case after giving the specific time inputs. Okay. After this, we will have an understanding of. Okay. Now we will go through a test specification example. I hope I will be able to check. Okay, software test case uh, development. So I name it as a STC, uh, which will have a release version of 1.0 and the product name and uh, its variant which is a uh, uh, something like embedded uh, instrument, embedded instrument uh, uh, variant 1, variant 2, etc. will be named. Then we have a template uh, as you can see, we have the project of product name, uh, in customer name, who are the stakeholders, what is the test case development. We have a review history and we have the POC as the test case identification. Test, uh, then, uh, then there is a test group. As we said, the test cases are need to be identified first. Then, uh, for all the requirements, once we have identified the test cases, we are going to group them based on the grouping criteria. And uh, as I said, there is a end document uh, highlight uh, portion which will highlight the preconditions. Preconditions are nothing but the conditions that must be available for uh, executing that particular. Okay. How test cases uh, are identified for each of the requirements? This uh, whatever I am showing is an example of uh, a typical test case uh, document. It may not be this way all the time, but mostly this covers uh, the minimally the aspects of. Uh, Embedded system test case. This is an example. Okay. So, what we will do is we will uh, first specify the requirement with an with its ID, the product name, what are the SRD, SRD is the software requirement document. Uh, each of the requirement will highlight. Then, uh, so what is the functionality of that requirement? Uh, we are going to test it in this uh, particular test. Then uh, any interface requirements we are going to test it 
uh, here interface requirements uh, uh, basically a software requirements uh, document of course I am going to uh, give you an example of how SRD looks like basically it will have a couple of parts uh, one part will be highlighting the uh, basic operational or functional requirements the other part will be surrounding this operational requirement surrounding me it could be an input uh, to this requirement or it could be an output to this requirement or a linking requirement or an interface requirement interface could be interface uh, with the primary requirement suppose the requirement says that uh, some value based on some value some action will be taken care so this value how it is going to come is what it is going to be attached with the interface requirement so interface, interface requirement will uh, uh, specify about the interfaces required for the particular set of requirements functional requirements will highlight the function or the operation all this will be listed as part of the test case identification because this test case identifier whatever you are seeing the table will cover up all this uh, uh, requirement uh, this test uh, case list here is the format of uh, test case uh, design it has a test case id it has an input it has a condition and uh, finally we have it. as i said each test case will be identified with a unique id uh, it could be ending with a tc01 or td001 whatever it is then for that particular test so what is the input attitude to execute the test then once i provide the input so in the first one you see as a first set of inputs here we are going to specify the inputs that will be used or applied then the conditions once we provide the input what i have to do uh, should i uh, power on something or should i uh, uh, move the product or should i uh, switch on something etc so all these uh, things will be specified here yeah. the conditions uh, that are uh, aligned with this input will be mentioned here. Uh, that basically triggers the test. Of course, at the end of the result, uh, sorry, at the end of the test, based on this condition, so what is our output that can be uh, that is highlighted here and then expected. Mention the expected output based on the triggered criteria. So likewise, uh, we are going to have different test cases. It could be one, two, three, ten. As I said, uh, for the example required identification starts with a requirement. Uh, the requirement could be a functional requirement. Identifying all the functionalities uh, of the particular requirement, and uh, for each of the requirement or any of the requirement, uh, it could have an interface requirement. As I said, interface requirement is surrounding the functional requirement. That we specify the interfaces that are required to satisfy the primary requirement. The interfaces could be any input value or any output value, etc. So all these have to be covered in terms of addressing the functionality or functional requirement. So the test case uh, framework is something like. Uh, there are uh, four columns. One is a test ID. So this will identify uh, test case. As uh, you see, the product name followed by its variant. Then you have a TC. Then we have a unit number. So we can have a one, but that should be all coming under this set of functional requirement. And uh, that specific uh, test case has inputs so what are the that so is good that test test the inputs that will be up this could be first set of inputs for this test is one the condition this condition on the input that regarding test this condition so what is the condition that I need to do it to really accept the first set of values for this condition when so on the execute so what is the output I can expect uh, the output could be any value or any 
monitoring or port or anything it could. So all this has to be mentioned in the last column. So this will complete the one test case. Similarly, we will have test case two, test case three, etc. Test case two will have a second set of input and it will have its own unique second set of conditions. It will have second set of etc. To develop a test case. I repeat again. So each test case will be unique by itself. It will have an input. It will have uh, that will be the back input, and it will have an expected result after that condition has been executed. So all these steps have to be formatted in this table for the requirement. This test cases have to be listed on. So this requirement, what I have highlighted here, is nothing but for one requirement. Likewise, I can have multiple requirements. So likewise, I'm going to create different test cases. So this document will end up with all the test cases identified in the first section. That is test case identification or requirement. That is. Each requirement will have identified, identified multiple tests. Okay. Now we know that there are a number of test cases. You see 001 to 002, 10, 20, 30, whatever it is. Once I have identified, as I said in my earlier slide, we need to group it. So grouping is taken care in the next section. So this grouping will have its own identification, PG test group. You can tell that uh, the functionality. As I said, the grouping is really based on the uh, group of requirements or the functionality or uh, some criteria which will help uh, a particular test to carry on its test. That's why we name it as functional name of that group. So I have put an example more entry is one group issue is the first issue second issue is the third. we can have it or we can depends on the uh, configuration of the to have the document okay so in this group what are the parents I am going to take care so I have a requirement test case uh, ID as one test case as six so these two parents I am going to cover parent is here nothing but Pointing to the test case number. So these test cases are grouped basically. Then I am going to mention the owner who is responsible for doing this grouping. Then we have what sort of a grouping it is. Is it a, what sort of a test cases I am going to cover in this group? As I said, it could be normal range. It could be robustness, it could be review, or it could be manual, whatever it is. You can mention the type, particular type, which is applied for this test case, or sorry, this test group. Then we are going to have a reference. The reference could be anything within the requirement. It may not be enough to just write down the test case and test grouping. So we need to probably refer some of the other supportive documents like the tolerances or constant or any of the system level information that is very much important that is for understanding purpose that we can refer it to you. The next section is sorry, next uh, next highlighter is uh, the precondition. As I said, the preconditions could have to be in place for executing this particular group. Uh, we will uh, what is precondition? I'll just uh, have a look into it. Uh, for example, uh, appendix A point to a precondition set one. Similarly, we can have multiple uh, preconditions. Here uh, we have listed as two preconditions. So I'm going to use first precondition. So 
that is precondition one is used for developing this test uh, group or uh, grouping the different uh, test cases this case one and six and this precondition have to be in place before or by for taking of the test case this particular test group precondition one what will be the precondition uh, uh, one so the preconditions could be something like we need to power on the emitted product unit and set some of the values or uh, below settings have to be performed uh, some of the default conditions or the specific conditions like uh, uh, potentiometer values turning into some uh, uh, or uh, resistance uh, putting to some value or some of the discrete should be enabled or a power has to be 3 volt, 3 volt, 5 volt all this can be part of the precondition. So that's what I uh, list all the preconditions which minimally need to be set before testing source. Uh, and uh, that is about precondition. And uh, okay, so we will come back to this section again later. Similarly, I am going to have a next group in terms of XSA, 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 I am just going to write down all this so that uh, there is something like a, a development uh, which we can understand. Okay. Constant table or uh, uh, those sort of a requirement that will be used. Okay. Next one is the precondition. As I said, the precondition, the conditions are nothing but uh, the minimal uh, set of. Uh, Values or default conditions that needs to be the three conditions I'm going to have here is that okay. apply the voltage three country for at least five seconds. So what it means is that for doing this test or before start of the test, I must make sure that. This voltage is used for five seconds. 
that is what the precondition is. So, that is about the, the precondition. Okay, so next one is uh, the inputs. The inputs for this test group. As a group, we know that what it is capable of, what are the test cases groups for. So, we need to highlight that uh, those inputs. So, that can be uh, steps, that is a combination of all the steps in terms of this test group will be highlighted here. Next, uh, once I have highlighted the inputs, I am going to describe it and I am going to provide an expected result combined with So, basically this will have again uh, the test uh, cases what we have identified similar to this, but in the grouping what I have done is. I have highlighted multiple requirements with a flow of expected results so that I can continue from test case 1 to the 10 or 20, whatever the grouping that I have done. So, that is the idea behind having these two steps. I am defining the common set of inputs and describing the conditions and the applicable. Okay. So, before the end of this test group, there is a uh, test bench that needs to be highlighted. So, I will uh, later tell you what is a uh, test bench. Uh, basically, the test bench uh, is a test setup or the test setup for on which I am going to execute this test, test group. A test bench could be automatic test or a manual test or a test uh, with an open box, etc. So, all that will be mentioned here in terms of test group. Same thing we are going to have it for all the group. After the precondition, this will come. So, that device will likewise be going to continue for all the grouping uh, of the complete requirements. So, that is about uh, the requirement group. So, first section uh, we will identify the test cases all the test cases for each of the requirements. Then once we have identified the all the test cases, we are going to group them, the okay, grouping style. Once all the grouping is done, we ensure that all the test cases have been covered in our group. With that, uh, the test case development is complete. Of course, in the end, we have appendix. Appendix, uh, either we can use any pointer to any of the documents in this or we can use appendix for highlighting the precondition. And also we have uh, highlighted as an example in the appendix uh, some of the test scenarios uh, list of static analysis. As I said the test bench that I am going to use could be a code workflow. So, it could be using a static analysis method. So, I am going to list out what are the tests that will be taken care of as a static analysis. So, what are the tests which are categorized under operational or functional requirements. So, what are the tests or test groups which have been taken as a non functional requirement? So, this will provide me a list of complete set of tests. So, this is something like a coverage uh, matrix, I can say. And uh, coverage is under uh, a separate section. Here, I have a uh, power and a method. It is up to you how you want to design test matrix or test uh, sorry cover uh, test coverage matrix or uh, whatever you want. Mm -hmm. So, this will highlight all the tests and uh, the grouping how it is done and I am going to list it out. This will be a complete uh, test case development or test case design document. Please post me any questions uh, if you want to have you can touch base on each of these specific sections with an example. Of course, I am going to provide you this template and I am also going to provide you a uh, uh, couple of uh, exercises. So, you can exercise this and you will have a uh, clear idea about it. So that is about an example of this case uh, how it is going to be done. So, all these are 
part of the test case data. I have put some example, something like how I am going to design it. So we have gone through a test specification now. We have gone through the test specification example with all these aspects in terms of uh, the test case design. Uh, one example I have put here uh, considering a telephone instrument, the uh, instrument which we want to test it which is having an embedded uh, software can be called as a test object. The tester could test different things about the instrument. Uh, for example, uh, telephone uh, should allow user to talk to other phone. The telephone uh, will have features like retail, flash, conference call, or uh, conference call, any other calls uh, adding to that available or not. If it is available, uh, can they be used as per documented? Whether uh, they are documented or enough uh, to have this. The one thing is that uh, the product as such is complete only when it is appropriately developed. Here, developed means the product should have a complete uh, user acceptance. User acceptance is could highlight the manual or document how it should be used. That is our theoretical part, uh, along with what it is capable of doing in terms of its operation or its usage. Uh, similarly, how we are going to instrument, how we are going to uh, use that instrument, how long we can use it, how much capacity the instrument has to store uh, call space, the band number, call duration, etc. So all this will be uh, part of the requirement analysis. I would say. Uh, understanding of the system. Uh, to have this uh, above items in place, the tester should have an information about what it is expected from the instrument. That means the instrument has to be understood by the tester. So these aspects are to be considered for analyzing the telephone instrument. Here I have put as an example. That means uh, the tester should have an uh, understanding of the Product, what is testing for it? So, this is what uh, basically the need of the tester without which you cannot develop the test case. Okay, so we have gone through this with an example. So, it will have an unique name or title, unique identification of the test paper, its description, uh, preconditions for prerequisites. So, what are the steps? That means the conditions that be done, and uh, in the last the column we are told that uh, the expected results have to be solved. So some of the suggestions for mentioning the test case are uh, as per below. Short uh, unique names uh, will enhance the reliability of the specification and test reports. In the career, identification of the test case. All test cases should follow an identical defined format. As I said, it should be in a different format. The ID must be permanent. Adding or removing the test cases shall not change the ID. So, this is very important uh, point. We are suppose uh, uh, I have uh, say. This case uh, 356 as the last of this case. What will happen is during a review, suppose uh, the only test case, so maybe something like uh, 150 of this case has some problem, or uh, we thought that that is uh, not possible to execute. So, what we will do is we are going to invalidate that or we are going to delete it. By doing that, the numbers could uh, impact. So, still, what it is suggested is that we should not hamper the number that is there in here, what is being considered. I have this as a first version completely. In the next version, I should return the same thing except the one which I do not want. 
or except the one which I have modified. So that way we should have a readability and a control of this because there are multiple stakeholders which will be depending on uh, who will be depending on different test cases and they would have already gone ahead by developing test procedures and all that. It is very much impractical to change uh, uh, the test numbers everywhere. So uh, the suggestion is if you want to delete just go ahead and delete do not alter any number and suppose you want to insert insert a new number suppose a new test I have introduced I am going to do as a fifth as a last so this is a suggestion way the same thing is told me should be permanent the number should not alter again and again the description will have a brief description of the functionality that test is covered Preconditions as I said, exact uh, exact description of uh, the system state or the, some of the uh, conditions that is to be done before the execution. Then the steps. Last one is the acceptance. So this is about the test case design. Okay. Next, we will go to <coughs> test procedure. Uh, we know that test cases uh, we have developed. It will tell what should be done for covering the requirement. What should be done to test a particular requirement? It covers all the aspects of the theory in terms of how test is designed. So, what is the input? What can be expected? To achieve that expected result, or to achieve that, uh, or to achieve that triggering of the test. For that particular test case, we need to have a practicality of that test in terms of test conditions or the different values, etc. So, all that will be part of the test procedure. So, this will be something like it depends on how to test. It is stepwise actions on how a test case or group of test cases can be run or executed. So, basically, emphasis is on. How to run the test case to produce the expected result? Very much important. For me, very much important. How to run? We know that for test case, this is what of test. So, test procedure uh, has to be hundred percent mapped into the test case because we have developed. Uh, a number of test cases, all those test cases have to be one or the other way should be executed. So how we are going to execute is or this test procedure is going to highlight it. Test procedure should obviously tell the user of the test of that how we are going to perform the test. So we will go through the test procedure. As an This is uh, that test procedure template uh, with a uh, few examples of uh, the here. Uh, this is a bit elaborate than a test case. This is a similar bit which you will understand why it is important and why it is uh, bigger than a test case. Test cases are something like a design. Test procedures are something like uh, making the design work. So obviously, making the design work has to be more elaborated and uh, more procedural uh, oriented. So, so, the template uh, starting headers and all that we have know, complete as per the standard. So, the first few pages should be same as the cases and the just plan. We have a uh, about uh, two to three sections. So, problem is this okay. test introduction, test environment, test procedures definition. And we have a condition. Okay. So, in the first section, we are going to introduce about the test procedures. 
this document defines the test procedure for a major software product. Its purpose is the definition of the test procedures based on test case design and description. As I said, test case is, uh, is the primary input for developing this test procedure. The uh, objective is to cover 100 percent test case or the test case scenario. All the test the procedures are made. So the organization is supposed to be like this. It has a free cloud with a VBID. It has a post cloud for the ending node with a VBID. It is up to the test case designer or the organization or the uh, follower how he is going to write it. But in general, it is a good practice with that writing to be done. So, we will have a test procedure ready, beginner, the name of the function which is under the test, and uh, which test case we are going to cover. Okay, so one uh, issue is there here, it should be test flow, because uh, we know that, I will go through that uh, test case example. So, so test cases we have covered here. In the next section, we have told about the test. Case. The same thing we will map. So example is test group one. Which group I am going to cover in this test group? So it should be mapping to the test group. Test group. Okay, the owner is the person who created or modified the scenario for the last time. That means the person who has worked last time. It is made of first data, the first name, the first name, the name, each blah blah blah, whatever you want to have some of this time. And uh, again, I am telling you this uh, independency has to be maintained. In the testing. The testing group has to be dependent on the development team. In a certain stringent organization, uh, like uh, aerospace or uh, safety critical uh, projects, I have seen uh, even uh, the test procedure uh, writer or test executor or the reviewers are uh, totally independent. Typically, the one who develops the test scenario or test cases will not be executing, or he will be executing the other person's test cases. So, we will do a mix and match for that. So, in that way, independence is good. So, this is for the cause of independence and bringing up the quality, transparency, and thorough understanding of this stuff. So, that is why. To have an independent doing all the mix and match of the different cars. Next one is the test setup. As I said, the test bench, uh, what I am going to use it is what this will identify. Next is the type, test type, same as uh, uh, what we have mentioned here a normal range, no response, no You may ask why we have repeated here some of these things. Uh, it is because uh, every time uh, uh, whoever does the execution or whoever develops the scripts or the uh, test sample did not have to go through the test group or test page in the He has a fair idea about the test group or test page. So he is going to develop the tests and the scripts. Actually. So better he knows all those inputs in these two steps, the setup as well as the type. And the same set of three conditions can be used here. Uh, one of the other important thing is that uh, the three conditions can be more elaborated or detailed. 
as i said uh, in the test case development or design we might not have come up with a uh, complete uh, practical knowledge what will be is it's the likely setup that is going to be used or a overview of the setup that is going to be used whereas in these steps we are going to be exactly mentioning what is that uh, we need for doing the execution of this particular procedure once all this base work is done the steps we are going to have the test block this basically the practical uh, steps the sequences or the action that needs to be performed on the target or on the system to execute this particular test this is the test block the test block we will end with the normal we need so this is how the test case is just the problem I could I can have multiple test cases the next one is uh, uh, the applicable documents which I am going to use as I said the test plan of application plan is going to be the test case document and any of the customers to plan Documents, standards, techniques, etc. So all these references which are useful or which are uh, the basic uh, inputs for developing the and any other reference documents like I took the. Yes, we have all of these things. Now, I will say that uh, this procedure is always this way. This three sections, the very important section, uh, that is where this, this this document has to be a separate or unique one. What I say uh, in uh, several. Uh, Places or application testing, uh, I have seen um, or I have heard that uh, there will not be any separate test procedure document. What they do is they develop the test case, and in the same document, they are going to mention uh, this is what I am going to do, this is what I am going to execute, and this is what I am going to test. But uh, that way they will cover it. But in that way, the control uh, may not be hundred percent. So yeah. in many cases or many domains, it is. Uh, Mandatory that they will have a separate test procedure. In that, again, these three steps are very important. Those three steps have to be tested to uh, detailed uh, information, or they will be pointing to the separate section. The section could be something like this in the below. So, what is the environment we are going to use for doing this test procedure or executing this test procedure? So, test environment will have a environment identification. The environment, as I said, the test embedded test environment or the setup, how it can be used or how it can be identified for executing the test. The environment uh, basically will have uh, two types: one is the automated testing, other one is the manual testing or debug mode testing. Uh, we know automated testing we Use the best for human intervention. Use the bad execution sort of thing. We use a PC based application where we have a black box sort of approach where we will have a six turning all the time. And we will uh, monitor the output or measure the output from the end target system. The second type of environment uh, we could have is the manual mode of testing. This will uh, have the hardware. Uh, Opened or the hardware hooked, a debugger or uh, any of the measuring equipment hooked inside the target board or specific pins. Uh, the measuring instruments could be oscilloscope, digital multimeter, or any of the frequency generator. Anything it could be. 
basically we categorize uh, this kind of name as two types automation testing and manual testing. As part of the environment, uh, we will identify the tools. What are the hardware tools I need to have an environment? Uh, I will I think probably in the next uh, session I will uh, explain few slides about uh, test bank or setup or uh, in particular uh, a target how it is going to be uh, used in the environment in terms of uh, emulation, simulation or monitoring etc. To do all that we need to have identified the environment. The environment uh, will have uh, tools. The tools could be hardware and software tools. The hardware tools are something like the target board, and the target board having a, a programmed embedded software interface board for providing the speed or analog special hardware anything needed, an emulator or emulator with that evaluation board from PI. It could be an adapter for RS to can Ethernet, any, any other separate setups needed. Of course, we need a power supply, we need a DMM, display multimeter. I think uh, I am going to uh, have a slide for uh, jargon, embedded uh, term, which are used in MS system. There is a separate slide I have prepared. I think I am going to add all this one by one so that just uh, we can have a recap of all those words. Those words have to be in mind for an embedded system drive or embedded system cluster. This is also scope, a PC, and for software tools, we use the uh, uh, target connected system called PC based application or automatic software application. Uh, software tools could be an integrated development environment, which is a, a tool which connects to the target board primarily with the processor, which will help you to uh, program for development perspective and debug and test from the test perspective. And uh, to program a new images, new software, we use a flash programmer. Or any GUI. Sometimes a GUI is also used. GUI or HMI. So, plastic program. Any software which interfaces the Android product. Uh, any tools uh, for monitoring the Ethernet, monitoring the CAN, uh, CAN for anything it could be. So these are specific for software tools. Next, once we have this uh, hardware and software tools identified, how are we going to have the environment up? How are we going to have the test setup made available for the test procedure execution? So setup will have a connection, setup will have a power supply, setup will have a I/O, etc. Probably we can touch this an example uh, the next session. Similarly, on a host, we can have application setup. So here we have highlighted uh, embedded the uh, or the target based uh, setup procedure. Here we have highlighted application setup procedure. Application setup procedure should be connecting the uh, USB to the host with a scan card or adapter. This is an example basically. Or a JPEG table uh, emulator uh, connected to the target port and uh, etc. Okay. So, the other important aspect of the embedded software uh, testing is uh, we may have to build uh, as per the documented development process. Uh, the embedded product. So that we need to have a build instruction available in the procedure document. Uh, software build. Uh, I will tell you what is software build. This is basically a embedded software uh, 
program which is going to reside inside the temporary target system. So to do that uh, we will have the source code or we will have the object file compiled linked and which will uh, be uh, programmed eventually on the target system. To program it we need to develop the image this is called as an image. So image is nothing but a raw file, a raw binary file or hex file or f record there are different formats that are used. It's specifically based on the target board and the poster. So the build instructions uh, will be something like uh, uh, use the uh, TCS. TCS is talking about the code composer, code composer studio. As I said, uh, uh, this is an IDE which will be used for uh, programming or developing the code, compiling, linking, and generating the executable. First, we will do that. Then we will load that executable using an HMI. HMI will be used as a utility to program or to connect first the target system and program the image. That image was built in the previous step. Then we will download that. Then we will have a debug creation in terms of verification of debugging. Sometimes we may have to have additional projects imported so that will be part of the next step. But then uh, how we can download uh, uh, those additional imported files. So these are some of the steps involved for building the MBA software. So this will be part of the test procedure uh, section. One of the sections should highlight this. Uh, next will be test execution. How am I going to execute the test? So, for executing the test, it could be, as I said, this could be using a PV based applications or any of the scripts or any of the automation that we have done in the post machine. So the scripts are created from the test procedure document, that is this document using a tool. So this is just an example I will tell you. So basically the test procedure, the steps are used as a test step and uh, uh, one example is that all those steps will be mentioned in an Excel sheet. Excel sheet will have a same table as uh, as I highlighted in the previous uh, test case development. So I will uh, again uh, show you how it looks like, and uh, that Excel sheet will be used as an input document sometimes uh, with certain columns highlighting the values and certain columns highlighting those values as inputs or outputs and certain additional columns having the expected values. This will be used as an input and the script will take this excel sheet as an input and generate the uh, script uh, that is uh, uh, sorry generate the uh, triggering values on the target and it will execute. So, the script basically uh, takes the inputs from the test procedure document, the test procedure document can be an Excel sheet and it triggers the values as listed in the Excel sheet and it produces the results and it compares the result also as per the expected results that is part of the Excel sheet and it generates a pass value. And the tool generates the relevant test scripts, files are also known as test sequence, it is also called as test sequence. Then this will be opened in a Windows application tool for execution. See, basically, this is an example. This will not be this way. Uh, there are different methods that they have used. Uh, there could be an XML based test generation or Excel sheet based test generation or UB application, whatever it is, UB script, Python, Perl. It is up to the uh, test development or environment based on their feasibility, how they want to have a test execution done for the. Set up test procedure. 
The next one is uh, automation testing using PC based application software. Uh, this is uh, basically the application which will be used for developing the post based tool. So, I have put an example typically how it has been done. The PC based automated test software. We develop using a, either a VC, VC software, or digital testing application. Uh, this application software provides a GUI for user to develop, edit, delete, and then you could test scripts. As I said, the test scripts uh, are uh, nothing but a Python or Perl based scripts. Those scripts can be hooked or uh, edited or executed from this PC based application. And a test engine. Uh, to sequence or executed test cases will be part of the PC based application. This software uh, also has an ability to run the sequence automatically. That means we can uh, uh, have a batch to execute uh, multiple scripts, etc., uh, so that the uh, testing will be automated. The embedded software is updated to add the test functionality. Uh, without affecting the software normal functionality, which provides the interface between the target software and the PC based application. So, here what it means is we have developed the PC based application, and there should be a meeting for this guy to connect with the target. So, this connection could be anything, it could be CAN based or it could be RS2 or any of the communication we can use. So, basically, uh, the interface has to be there so that the PC, uh, the application based in the PC can be used in order to communicate with the target. So, in order to communicate with the PC, there has to be an equal or corresponding responses or the reactive updates at the target system. So, there has to be something that is called a test code or a test hook. Basically, that will have a piece of code part of the embedded software which will interact with the PC based application. So, that is what is being told here the embedded software is updated that is the basic core system within the embedded target will have an additional test functionality which is mostly it is called as a test code. So, without affecting the software normal functionality we have to be careful in terms of test code which should not impact by itself just for it is there inside the embedded software. So, which provides an interface between the target software and the PC data. We may take up an example uh, at a next stage or we may again revisit this because this is an important aspect of the embedded software testing. So, this is one example. Well, there could be several uh, systems where uh, uh, those systems may not need a test software. Those systems by itself have been designed to support the target uh, connecting with the PC uh, without the need of uh, test software. The next one is the manual testing. We are the test procedures are tested manually. So previously we have seen automated test is done through the PC based application. In the next uh, uh, group of testing uh, we use it manual testing. So manual testing uh, the target board is tested manually. 
uh, with the help of an uh, IDE, integrated development uh, environment in the core components for your three multiple. These are some of the IDEs that are used to speak to the processor. So, with the help of a watch window or debugger uh, and any measuring equipment such as uh, uh, oscilloscope, uh, this is the we will have a manual testing done. In addition to the automation test setup, we have the data use connector. We know that in uh, automated testing. We don't have a debugger reaction. We will use the target board as a black box. Here we will use it as a white box with the help of IDE. And that IDE is hooked with the main target uh, using a data. So the data is connected with the test board, which uh, in turn connects to the evaluation board or the target board. I can say the target board. So, rest of the end to end setup or connectivity function, test procedures are manually analyzed using the code instruction or debugger execution. Uh, we can also do an automation on the debugger. Uh, the IDE is to support that actually. Uh, I mean, uh, there are the IDE commands with the help of them, we can do an automation. Uh, we can do the batch execution on the debugger window. And the results are processed manually. It means the results are captured uh, with the help of a logger or whatever. And the outputs are determined by the password. The entire software is updated. Same uh, here also. Like test function, we have a test code in there. Uh, here also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can list out uh, what are the test procedures. Which will be used the manual testing. Next one is the, the picture depicting the test environment. You can see here test environment as I said. Uh, this uh, desktop or the PC will have a testing tool, uh, IDE or uh, any of the automation tool uh, based on our application such as VC, VB, so that will have a connection with the target board. A target board uh, can be fed with the real time inputs with the help of a test panel or the breakout box. So, with this, uh, the, the test environment will be used. Okay. So here uh, few examples I have put. The structure is same basically. The automation test procedure uh, it is the same as the manual test procedure. Uh, here test setup uh, will use automatic test setup. Whereas in this case it will use the manual test setup. Uh, we know that in manual test setup we use uh, IDEs or uh, data based. Uh, uh, Debugger and all that. In automated test system, we use a black box connectivity in the test system. Test is all same. Uh, we can insert the script here, what we have done here, so that we complete the, the particular test procedure. Similarly, for manual testing, we can also have the script uh, based on the manual testing. So that is with uh, the this uh, procedure we are talking about. And uh, we use some of the environment specific preconditions. As I said, uh, specific preconditions with specific values will be highlighted in the test of your document. Those could be, for example, uh, uh, the different voltages, setting of these different voltages, and uh, 
some of the unlocks setting is values as a component with the etc so all this will be part of the preconditions that are required for specific test of specific group of tests. here uh, we have put the automatic test set up uh, what are the contents like this is uh, Windows environment, application software, MA card for scan communication, power supply, exhibition tool for downloading the embedded software. And test box, the target board will have a target board, the cluster. And uh, certain panels uh, for analog, discrete inputs, etc. So there could be a uh, connection hook for oscilloscope. For the oscilloscope, uh, for multi-channel capturing, we use uh, email connectors, which are PNC email connectors. So we can use them. For uh, manual test setup, uh, it will be similar to the one that we use for automatic test setup. Exception is being that. Uh, there is a data. This we uh, use a IDE and the host side uh, for the manual test. Test will be almost same as the atom test. So that is about the test setup specification. How it is the test setup? Automatic automatic test setup. How it looks like? Manual test setup. How it looks like? Similarly, we can have a test software build the detail, tools information like the tool version which we use. Uh, we know that test software build is something like a special build which is used for uh, having the test test software. Uh, Inside the target target. So this details will be uh, tools, uh, tools, version, uh, its references, and uh, any special uh, instruction. That needs to be taken care, etc. Can be highlighted in the tools information. And uh, some of the uh, tools may require uh, to be qualified. It's called tools qualification. Uh, tools qualified data. All that have to be pointed out. Uh, tools qualification in the sense, uh, for example, in an aerospace project. Uh, uh, they look for a stringent uh, test process. They look for uh, stringent uh, guidelines as per the DO, the position uh, uh, standard. So, what they specify is uh, uh, the tools that are used for uh, testing or developing the embedded software should have a qualified uh, report. That means the tools have to be. Full proof. I mean, we should not uh, generate an intermediate error. It should not be a buggy or a defect uh, producing code or defect producing uh, instrument. So that needs to be as part of the process. Similarly, we have a software download procedure as we said in the earlier section. Uh, download instructions will be there. Along with uh, any of the operations on the target board, this could be specified. So, this will be part of the test procedure. So, likewise, we can have as many as the information, but all this has to be part of the test procedure. That means we should not miss out anything. 
that are uh, related or related or related to the test procedure. Okay, so that is the, uh, an example, a just the example of a test procedure. So test procedure, test procedure document uh, will have uh, identifying the test procedure, its organization, applicable uh, and include document. Any other reference document. Then uh, this procedure uh, is based on which environment, the manual, automated, and how it's going to be executed. So, what are the options for the testing, PC based application, or any manual testing done on the target code, etc. Then uh, we have procedures for the installing or using the automated. Uh, testing or manual testing, uh, testing setup. Okay. In the end uh, we need to have what special uh, information about all the tools or the build and all these things that we do. That is about the procedure document. So, okay, so that is nothing but uh, SPS design and procedures in this session. Uh, maybe we will continue this session about the SPS and procedures with the last one being the test standard. Uh, this will be the space in the next class.